ladies and gentlemen, do y'all know what time it is? Do y'all really know what time it is? It is time for that fall season of anime. And this anime right here, this anime that I'm introducing, Strike the Blood. Now, I'm going to be honest with y'all. This is undoubtedly, it's just episode one, okay? This is episode one review of Strike the Blood. This anime, undoubtedly, like I said, is not only one of the best introduced this year, but it is one of the best animes introduced of the new generation. The new generation of anime, okay? Five points I would like to make before I get into the review of this amazing episode. Number one. First and foremost, it's just too beastly. It, it, it is too beastly. The concept of it. The concept of it. I have never... Now, I'm not the, you know, most well-versed of anime viewers and reviewers. But I can tell y'all this. There has never been a concept like this. It is a hybrid of pretty much all of what most anime fans love. Okay, I mean you got the whole school normal life aspect. You have pretty much a shonen aspect. You have the the etchy aspects of it. You have magic and and the supernatural along the fantasy vibe to it. You have strong female character. You have a cool male protagonist. You know, I can go on and on. The the whole isolated wor uh, district. So much epic stuff going on, yo. It is too beastly. It is beyond beastly. Number two. The character introduction. The character intro. These are very intriguing. Very, very intriguing characters. You want to know more about these characters. And then the flashbacks they give. Number three, yo. Number three, the animation. Now, it is not on the level of Attack on Titan and Hunter x Hunter 2011. But, this anime, right below it, I'm tell y'all, right below it, it's on point. It's beautiful, okay? Beautiful. Number four, I said... I said five elements. I'm going to stop with three and just go ahead and get into the review. Not to bore y'all. All right. So this episode uh, this episode starts off with a very strange thing indeed. Because actually I, I rewound it I think a couple of times to make sure my um, computer, you know, the video was working properly. Because it was these weird, uh, really focused, like, tunnel vision blurred outside stuff you know it was strange and then you had people talking about stuff that didn't matter but one thing I did catch was the fourth progenitor you know they were talking about this in unknown voices and then we skip over to um this another scene it was this friend slash couple you know they may they may have had a crush on one another one of them is wearing a kimono I guess the, the females wearing kimono she's passing by with her dude he's in regular clothes you see this dude with pretty much a gray hoodie on he's walking by and this this girl she um this young lady her sandal strap breaks and so she kind of falls and she's kind of you know butt kind of sticking out whatever and he turns and he had some uh, somewhat of an x-ray vision moment and so he had the nosebleed and anime watchers should understand what the nosebleed means yes but uh but i found that 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 was kind of interesting but then we cut over to where he's pretty much sleeping and i'm guessing he's with friends and that that was cool you know normal life or whatever and it said something about vampire and he was trying to cover that up or something and apparently he's lazy in school and they were talking about uh, Akatsuki Kojo's his name and so we follow him he's I guess going to the mall or whatever and just walking walking and then this 
young ladies tracking him slash stalking him and he's trying to lose her and he goes into a store and he sees get loser then he runs into her sort of on his way out of the store it, it was a funny scene awkward dead funny and then he's you know he's like <laughs> the scene comedy gold you know it was golden comedy the scene when he acts like an italian that was hilarious oh no me speak japanese italiano grazie grazie <laughs> that was funny that was really funny and then he leaves and he's trying to walk off trying to say he ain't kojo he don't know what she, she talk about she crazy she looking for somebody else he he's walking off and then we see the start to see you know two dudes you know trying to hit up now mind you this young lady this girl looks like a middle schooler or is in middle school whatever but she seems not like you know her age she's not acting her age she's much more confident than that to say the least but um so she's still following him and these two dudes are trying to hit on her trying to ask you want to go get some some dessert or you know go sing karaoke must apparently karaoke must be big over in japan or something i don't know but anyways she's like yeah she ain't she ain't seeing him and then apparently he's <laughs> Like, oh man, J just watch the scene. It's, it was funny, but then dog uh, apparently demon, you know, uh, 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 I forget a trail something or another. Um, Kojo recognizes. Um, he's pretty much a shape shifter, and the other one is a D type, some kind of vampire. But she pretty much is wrecking shop. Well, she got pissed because they looked at pretty much her panties because her skirt went up. That was the scene. It was funny, but um. Yeah, she, she didn't, she's ready to fight the, uh, she's ready to pwn the, uh, the vampire, D type vampire dude, and he calls a, a familiar, and that reminds me of, uh, wizards and warlocks and all of them, you know, the witches, and she pwns that easily, like, pretty much one shots that, and he's like, yo, what, what's going on, I, I mean, I'm on, and she's about to wreck him, but, <laughs> uh, Kojo stops her, and and he tells them y'all y'all need to stop okay get the hell out of here go go just go and they leave and then they have a conversation and then <laughs> it it was funny the conversation was funny but anyway she ends up dropping a lot of her wallet and he finds out her name's Hagger oh my goodness Hagger Mio Hagger Mio some of them along those lines I just done slip my mind but anyway i'm gonna call her hoggy whatever anyway he he good next day he goes to her um her school the middle school and he tries to uh find her teacher but then she she runs into him while he's leaving because the teacher wasn't there and they have this whole discussion then pretty much you know he uh <laughs> apparently <laughs> he had a note that was another funny part where he, he he was seeing her wallet trying to check for her information, right? And he smells her wallet and it reminds him of the whole panty scene yesterday. And he gets the nosebleed again. But um then we see um it was it was strange because it talked about being turned on and the bloodlust of a vampire. I was like okay that's the fir that's the first time now all, out of all the vampires i know of, i've never heard of any of that the blood you know the blood craving you know because of being turned on sexually excited i've never heard of anything like that but um but pretty much he said another key point he's like um it's good for now that my own blood satisfies me i i hope i wonder if he those cravings are going to get stronger later on in the series we shall see I'm having a feeling once his powers really start, and you'll understand what I mean by powers, once his powers really start kicking, and once he starts to understand who he is, yeah, the blood craving is going to get far stronger, okay? And so, he's like, here, you know, they, they were talking, talking, and, <laughs> okay, let, let me put you in a picture of these two characters. Kojo is pretty much confused and chill laid back kind of type he's confused on what he is because apparently three months ago he became um he used to not be a vampire and he became what is known a special type what's called a fourth progenitor 
and apparently he inherited something and Haji you know she as it is explained she's like working for the secret service or whatever and she's pretty much like there to observe him and she's rash she's um and you know self-conscious she's you know she's quite aggressive so she she's a mix of things but she's strong yo this she can fight and i like that i'm all about the strong female characters i'm all about that so we got two strong characters to introduce uh introduce and then we start getting flashbacks and whatever but the two two points I would like to end this review with. Number one is the whole setup. This uh, Eagle Mazi. I know I'm butchering. I'm sorry if I'm butchering the um, the the certain district that is 300 kilometers south of Tokyo, or southeast one of the two. It was a man-made island to where it was built pretty much the magical creatures, you know. To where they could be protected um the government set this up to where they can be protected it's called the demon district where they can be protected and where they can be researched and you pretty much off limits from using magic out in the public i take it of course you know and in there are the shapeshifters your demons your vampires and you got um or half demons and your vampires then you have man-made creatures and I forget what else um, Kojo had said in his um, kind of um, introduction of, I don't know what the word to call it. He, he wasn't talking to anybody, but he was kind of telling the viewers what it was about the Demon District. And with Kojo, Kojo was a normal person till three months ago, like I had mentioned before. So we'll find out more about that later. And then secondly, the ending flashback. What the heck? Like, yo, that was confusing, but overly cool. That was overly cool. And one of the points I had meant to make, and when I said there were five points, one of the points I had meant to make is, man, the the ending song. Now, I'm not a huge, I, I like, you know, like Attack on Titan had a great soundtrack. One Piece has a great soundtrack. Some of them, you know. I like some songs, but I'm not going to over and over listen to them. Hunter, Hunter Hunter has had some, you know. I'm not a huge anime music guy, but that ending, though, I'm probably going to listen to that after every episode of Strike the Blood. That ending song, man. That ending song is so beast, though. It is too trill. It is too trill. Yo, y'all have got to check out this Strike the Blood anime man you've got to check it out it's the truth it is absolutely the truth from episode one what is my rating a nine just the first episode it's a nine it is a phenomenal episode of strike the blood really i'm telling y'all this new anime apparently you know i don't know anything about the manga whatever but i'm just telling y'all man this is going to be a phenomenal story okay I don't know where this is gonna go, but these flashbacks and this whole concept, oh my goodness, and the comedies there, I mean, everything you can pretty much want. The only reason I did not give it a 9.5 or a 10 grade is because the it was dipping in the water in a lot of elements. So, it was a bit confusing, ain't to say the least, it was a bit confusing. But I'm okay with that. I'm okay with a little bit of confusion as long as it's foreshadowing. And that was the fifth point that I meant to mention. The foreshadowing this was on point. That's all part of the reason why it has such a high grade for an uh, you know first ever episode. So like, comment, subscribe. This is the unexpected one to tell me y'all thoughts. Please go check this out. I don't recommend series unless they are beastly, and this is definitely beyond beastly, as the thumbnail says. Y'all, I'll see y'all later. I'm definitely going to be reviewing this series amongst other ones because I got another one I got to check out. And uh, yeah, y'all have a beautiful night. Peace.